this was no ordinary cloudburst. Of all known storms, this was the worst. Oh, it rained every day, it rained every night. But the old gopher wood arc was weather tight. How it did rock and roll once it left the land. Inside, Noah had a problem on his hand. Everyone was sick, sick, sick. Sick of the rain. And bored with the food, they began to complain. Some even said, we've been in some boring places, but here, day after day, the same old tired faces. What with all the terrible snarling and growling and pushing and shoving and hissing and howling, poor old Noah's mood was one of complete despair. He chewed off his nails and almost tore out his hair. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth faced a difficult job. How in the world would they ever pacify this mob? Just how could they make them forget all this congestion? To try to reason with them was out of the question. Then Mrs. Noah calmly said, Music has charms to soothe the savage beast. Noah thought and scratched his head. Well, why not? It's worth a try, to say the least. Quickly, Shem, Ham, and Japheth dug down in a trunk and came up with what looked like a lot of old junk. Uh-oh, then a negative thought popped into Noah's head. Suppose the music irritated them instead. Suppose that wild, crazy bunch were stampeded. Holy cow, that would be all that he needed. But then, when he heard how those sons of his played, his doubts disappeared. He knew they had it made. Each bird and each beast with a smile on his face turned to his mate and with the utmost of grace offered her his arm. Er, I should say paw, er, wing. Noah was so happy, he began to sing. Come on and love one another, gotta love one another, cause we need one another as we journey on our way. Start thinking of one another, cheering for one another, standing by one another every day. When there's a storm to weather, surely you'll note that we are all together in the very same boat. So come and sing while it's raining, laughing, dance while it's raining, give up all our complaining, and we'll chase the clouds of gray. It's fun to love one another, really, love one another, truly, love one another all the way. One corner of this happy room sat Mrs. Hippo, filled with gloom. Though Harry Hippo was having the time of his life, not so his wife. She was having a jealous fit while old Harry danced and made a hit with all the females in the place. What a disgrace. So she was caught completely off guard when Noah said, Harry's such a card. He must be fun around the house. You're lucky to have such a spouse. Please, that will suffice. Mr. Noah, let me give you some advice. Now, looky here. Don't speak of stew to an oyster. Don't talk of chowder to a clam. I'm sure you realize that it ain't polite or wise. Bring a leg of mutton to a lamb. Don't ever say thermidor to a lobster. If his lifelong friend you want to be, and you'd be my friend too. Yes, I'd be obliged to you If you don't mention his name to me Don't speak of traps to a gopher Don't 
Absolute fact, when he's dancing with someone else in his arms, he's only dwelling on your charm. So round, so firm, so graceful. Who, me? When you see him whisper in someone else's ear, he's raving about you, my dear. How beautiful, how ravishing. Who, me? And when he smiles at someone new, he's thinking no one can compare to you. It was love at first sight. Who, me? Yes, your Harry is true to you. Then I have no cause to be blue. Where have you been hiding all my life? Oh, Harry, you say the cutest thing. Who, me? <laughs> Love one another, really. Love one another, really. Love one another all the way. It rained and rained and rained. And it rained some more. Then it really began to pour. I mean pour. Forty days and forty nights and all. There never was such a squall. The wind whistled and howled and blew, and the tempest grew and grew and grew. From wave to wave, the ark was tossed and hurled. This tiny boat with the entire population of the world. Then, just as quickly as the storm had started, the downpour stopped. The big black clouds departed. Old Noah sent forth a dove into the air. Returned with olive branch, forecast, weather fair. Noah ran quickly downstairs with what he'd heard. This was gospel truth. He got it from the bird. The rains had stopped. The skies were bright and clear. Their trip was over. They were here. But where was here? No one seemed to know or even seemed to care. The important thing was that they were there. Then they finally saw just where they were at, beached high and dry on good old Mount Ararat. Then everyone hugged and kissed and hugged their wives. This was a trip they'd remember all their lives. Now they waved goodbye and began to descend. Yes, all ashore, cause this was the end of the maiden cruise of the good ship Noah's Ark. They headed home with their little ones now. The families all grew larger somehow on the maiden cruise of the good ship Noah's Ark. They all went off in little bands to Asia or Peru. To Africa and other lands where life was starting anew. Now they all could brag every place that they'd go. Our family came over, you know, on the maiden cruise of the good ship Noah's Ark. So ends the tale of the world's first boat and of the history it wrote and of the man who proved his worth back in the earliest times of Earth. It was the maiden cruise of the good ship Noah.